Hey, what's up, good people? David Taub here from nextlevelguitar.com. How are you? Hope all is well. And uh, today we're going to have the second installment of what we're calling our plug-in shorts, where we're talking a lot about uh, recording and home base recording. And um, today we're going to talk about analog versus digital. And um, this is a, a topic that's hotly debated. And um, we talked a lot. I talked a lot about it to Ben Elliott, Grammy Award-winning producer engineer, on my recent trip to New Jersey to his Showplace Studios. And uh, I have another clip of Ben talking about it, and we'll get to that in a minute. And uh, you definitely want to go to Ben's uh, website at PluginHomeRecording.com, and they're giving out free passes there, free one-year backstage passes where you could watch their archived footage and all their past shows and their tutorials and artist downloads and things like this because uh, Ben and his team do a great show where you could learn all about you know all kinds of recording and music and they have all kinds of interviews with people that make gear and the shows they try to make them fun and Ben and Ned and the team do a really good job and um, you know you'll really like it so make sure you click on the link and um, go to their site and, and get your free backstage pass. We're only going to give out like three, four hundred of them. Um, so check that out. And remember that we're doing a series of these plug-in shorts. This is the part two. So follow along in the series. Check our YouTube channel at Rock on Good People. And you'll be able to watch these as we put up more and more and more uh, because Ben and I uh, captured some great footage in the studio. And also go to the plug-in site because there's full shows that I did while I was there talking about guitar playing or jamming with Leslie West or talking with Leslie West. That was a great time. And um, it's a lot of fun. So be sure to follow along in this series. And um, I think it's important before I get to the footage with Ben that in order to, you know, really understand about this analog versus digital it's important to take a look at the process what analog and what digital is and that really helped me when I first learned this you know a lot of people think like analog is one thing and digital is something and they're totally different and that's really not the case and this will really this really helped me to understand it is that it's really all about analog you know analog is basically means continuous and analog or analog recording sound is this continuous wave okay and and when you're recording analog most of the time you're recording on two inch magnetic tape there's smaller tapes you could use but it's mostly two inch magnetic tape very old school and um, and what that does is it records the actual wave you're recording the wave on the tape this analog wave now what digital does is it just tries to copy that wave it's copying this analogous wave and what it's doing through a series of converters is it's looking at this wave and through the digital equipment it's saying okay I'm gonna copy this wave and um, convert it to a series of zeros and ones and store it on a hard drive so it's not storing the wave like with analog what it's doing it's storing this digital kind of zero and one package right that's a copy of this wave so you see it's really all about analog um, and how it does that through the converters is through the digital equipment is it takes a look and it takes snapshots of this wave along various parts snapshots also called samples and it copies that and then it takes another snapshot and another set along various points in this wave and you've heard of sampling rate and that's how many of these snapshots it's taken and obviously the more snapshots the, the more truer it's going to be a copy and then it kind of fills in the blanks in between or the gaps the wave and then when it's done it has this copy of this analog um, wave and that's the the crux of digital recording right so okay a lot of people and, and I do too I think the analog sounds a little warmer it's a little bit warmer sounding but digital is so much easier to work with and you could do so much more things digitally that you can never even do analog wise so it's about finding that balance between analog and digital um, that works for you um, and the reason why it sounds warmer too is if you think about it like this you see tape tape recording on tape and this analog recording there's what's called tape compression and that's very real and very desirable this tape compression and that kind of happens too with tube amps a lot of times you hear tube amps are warmer sounding right because of this natural compression so what it does is it kind of rounds out the peaks and kind of softens them and 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 rounds them out over a, a longer curve so you get this kind of softer warmer rounder sound 
And that's such a big part of the analog sound is it's, is it's so warm. Where digital, with digital, um, this copying process, there's no natural compression. Um, so these edges or these peaks are not rounded off. And in fact, what happens is if you really push the input and you go past that zero in digital, what it does is it chops them. So instead of a rounding off gradual of a peak, digital will chop it. And then you have these harsh edges um, and whatnot. And so the, the analog, the, the tube warmth or the analog recording warmth comes from this nice softening, this natural compression. And that's very desirable, especially with certain instruments really, really take well to this natural compression to tape. Um, probably drums, probably one of the most important things as far as that sound to me better on tape because with drums, especially like snare and kick drum, you're getting that whap, 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 that, that real sharp hit, which really pegs that meter. And with digital, it can't take it as much. You got to drop that dB down. But with analog, it could kind of take that um, sound more. And what happens is with digital, there's all these transients that you get, and there's no natural compression to kind of squash them and round them out, right? You got to drop the decibel down really low. So drums really, really uh, take well um, to 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 analog recording and to tape, and. Um, so it's it's really interesting how you can also take like the best of analog and with today's technology, the best of digital and kind of combine them. And, and this is a lot of the conversation that I had with Ben Elliott. And uh, let's hear what Ben has to say on some of this stuff now. Basically, I think analog still sounds better than digital. It's a, a warmer sound. It's, it's more musical. Uh, with digital, there's nothing that really rounds out the transients. Uh, by that, I mean the peaks. So uh, when you go to tape, it can only take a certain amount of level, and uh, what happens is the tape saturates, and, and uh, just uh, normally it knocks down some of the sharp attacks. Um, also, digital is much more convenient. When we recorded on analog, uh, especially the editing, you had to do with a razor blade. It was destructive. You You're know, actually cutting the, the, right. the tape. Yeah, you, there was no going back. If you messed up, that was it. So, you had uh, one shot. Yeah, we used to practice it on the half-inch or quarter-inch tape before we'd actually cut the two-inch tape. Um, so you give it a trial run to make sure it would work. Right. And then and you would go because once you start tampering with that two-inch master, no going there's no back. turning back. Right. And, and also with um, analog, it was a lot longer process. You had to align the tape machine at the beginning of each session and make sure all the equalization was correct. And that way uh, you printed tones also on the analog tape. And that's what way if it went to a different studio, they would align to your tones and that way it would sound the same in any tape machine that you played back. So I hope you enjoyed this second part in the series. You know, keep watching our YouTube videos um, for more and more on, on these plug-in shorts and my um, discussions with Ben Elliott and uh, Leslie West. And be sure to go to our website at nextlevelguitar.com where we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of video lessons and jam tracks, guitar form, chord library. Right now, written lessons. Right now, there's over 700. In a few months, it might be over 800, 900. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, go to that website. Check it out. We have lessons for beginners, intermediates, advanced. Um, it's, you know, lessons on gear, lessons on effects, lessons on... Um, uh, guitar care and amps and settings. It's very comprehensive singing and playing, writing songs. Um, it, I think it's one of the best resources out there for, for learning guitar or getting your guitar playing to the next level, whether you've never picked up a guitar before or whether you're an intermediate or advanced player. Um, so check that out. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on this subscribe button. And be sure, like I said, to go to that pluginhomerecording.com and get your free pass for the next year before they're all gone, your backstage pass, so you can check out all the shows. And uh, there's a lot to learn on that site um, um, about uh, recording and home-based recording and, and gear. And uh, Ben really does a good job. Um, soon we, did, we took a tour of his studio and he has some amazing vintage equipment that have been in some of the most famous studios and that have done some of the best or, or most famous recordings of all time. And he has some and we talk about that gear. So check out for that one, uh, for that show. And um, 
Um, we appreciate you know your support as always. I'm David Taub, co-founder of NextLevelGuitar.com, and we will see you in the next lesson. Rock on!